situated in beautiful surroundings on the just northwest of the city of Aberdeen, where they have been established for over a hundred years. Here are some of the personnel arriving for work. They are entering the main gates and are dispersing to the various departments, where they will help to make the high quality clouds for which crombies are so famous. which crombies need for their fine cloths are purchased from the main wool producing countries of the world. The bales of wool which you see are from South Africa. Other wools are bought from Australia, New Zealand and to a lesser extent Scotland. In each fleece there are various qualities. These are nature's protection for the sheep and it is the wool slaughter's work to open up the fleece and separate the different qualities. On an average, five grades are sorted from each fleece. The wool is taken from the bales and placed on a warm grid to soften the grease to make the opening of the fleece easier. The wool sorter's trade is a very old one and records show that it was in existence in the 11th century. Great experience and skill are necessary, and in his work, the wool sorter feels the quality as much as seeing it. See how the fleece is handled to feel the quality. The next step is to scour or wash the wool. And you see the sorted wool being taken to the wool scouring or washing department. In addition to earth and vegetable matter, which the sheep has picked up whilst grazing, wool has a natural grease, which the sheep gives off for its own protection. This has all to be removed, so that when the wool is dyed, the color will penetrate right to the heart of the fiber. Fine wool, like all good woolens, 
should be washed carefully and gently. Two soapy waters, two rinses. The greasy wool is fed into the washing machine and then it is allowed to drop in controlled quantities into the washing liquor. Notice how the wool is being gently pushed through the soapy water without any harsh motion. The action of the wool being pushed through the water is enough to slacken the grease and sand. Washing must be carefully controlled as too hot water or too strong a soap can do a lot of damage to fine wool. After scouring, the wool has to be dyed, and here is the clean wool being carried forward in a container preparatory to dyeing. The Dyer's Laboratory. Wool dyeing is a mixture of art and of science, and although scientific research is taking place all the time, the dyer's experience is of paramount importance. Notice how the white wool has absorbed the colouring in the beakers. When dyeing a batch of wool, the dyer may use several colours of dye to get the required shade. Notice how the colours change when water is added. This is the dyeing department where the clean wool is brought and filled into dye vats. Water and dye stuffs are added and the vat gradually brought to the required temperature. A plentiful supply of water is necessary in the manufacture of woolen cloth and in this respect crumbies are particularly fortunate because of the close proximity of the river Don. Now you see the mill laid which is drawn off from the river Don and which runs right through the heart of the works.
Batches of wool take from six to eight hours to dye. These are some of the glorious colours which are a result of the dyer's work. After dyeing, the wool has to be dried, and here you see the wet wool being fed into a drying machine, which is simply a travelling tray carrying the wool over currents of hot air. After drying, the dyed wool is blown across to the blending department. Like a painter, both the dyer and the blender mix colours to get the required shade. And in a blend, as many as 15 colours can be used. The blend is thoroughly mixed. Notice how the colours in the blend are evenly distributed. After blending, the wool is sprayed with oil and is now ready for the next step, namely carding. The blended wool is blown across into the carding department and here is a blend arriving in the carding department ready for the next process. A carding machine being fed. The wool is fed into a hopper at the back of the machine and the supply of wool to the carding rollers carefully controlled. A carding machine is made up of a series of rollers covered with fine wire teeth and as the wool passes through the rollers it is gently combed into fine strands. In Crombies the accent on quality is so high that a carding set consists of five separate parts thus the carding process is repeated five times. Notice how the small rollers pick the wool off the larger ones and pass it on again. The wool is again combed off, but this time it is taken to the next part of the carding machine by a conveyor which layers the wool at right angles before feeding it into the rollers again. This is done to ensure better mixing of colour and quality. As the wide web is taken off the carding machines, it is divided into sections by the tapes which you see, 
and from the tapes, the wool passes through reciprocating rollers which rub each section into a sliver. The slivers are then wound onto bobbins and are now ready for spinning. The completed bobbins are taken across to the next apartment and loaded onto the spinning mules. A spinning mule stretches and twists the sliver of wool in one operation. When the carriage runs back, the wool is wound onto the bobbins. This is another method of spinning, frame spinning. The next process is to get the yarns ready for weaving and the warp yarns are now being taken for warp winding. The yarn has to be transferred from the mule bobbin onto cones. This is necessary to give the warper the length of yarn required for her work. Notice the very deft movement of the warp winder's hands. Reef knots are being tied. When the cones are completed, they are taken across to the warping and the cones of different colour filled into a bank or creel. Here you see the warper loading a creel. It is very important that the yarns are set on the creel exactly to the pattern required, as one thread out of place can spoil a whole piece of cloth. The yarn from the bank is then wound in sections onto a large roller, and every thread through the width of the warp, which can be anything up to 6,000 threads, must be in its proper place.
After the warping is complete, it is wound onto a large beam and is ready for the next step, which is drawing. A completed warp beam is now being taken forward to the drawing department. Drawing is another job which calls for great skill. Each warp thread has to be drawn through the metal eye and it must be drawn through exactly to pattern. This has to be done so that when the frames are fitted to the mechanism of the loom, the warp threads are raised and lowered in the correct position, thus ensuring that the design is built up according to the designer's wishes. Threads are being drawn in small bunches through a reed. We are now ready to weave, and you see part of one of the weaving sheds. Weaving is a very ancient trade, and the looms which you see could reasonably be described as one of the first attempts at automation. Notice how the warp threads are raised and lowered and the shuttles thrust through pulling the wet thread after them. The subsequent interlacings make a cloth. The cloth which you see being woven is a check bag which means that the design on the face is different from the one on the back. After weaving, each piece of cloth is very carefully examined. Any flaws or any bad knots that are found are carefully repaired by hand. You now see darners at work, and notice how the darner's needle is following the intricate weave of a cloth. After examining and mending, the pieces are then shrunk or milled. First of all, the pieces of cloth are given an alkali bath.
the wet pieces have been placed in a milling machine. A milling machine can best be described as a pair of rollers through which the cloth is driven under pressure. The water, soap, alkali and pressure do the shrinking. After milling, the pieces are then washed, and like wool scarring, they must be carefully handled. After washing, some of the pieces are straightened and dried right away, Others are carried forward for further processing. Here are some pieces which are being taken to the raising department. This is the raising department. In raising, the surface of the cloth is run against rows of teasels, and you can see teasels being fitted into metal rods, which are in turn cloth is run against the teeth of the teasels and the surface raised into a pile. After raising, the cloth is again rinsed and dried before being cut to an even pile. A piece is now passing through a cutting machine. The blades of a cutting machine are rather like that of a grass mower but of course set very close and razor sharp. After partial finishing, the cloths are again examined and any vegetable matter which is left, even after the processing through which it has gone, is carefully picked out by hand. This is known as burling and you see the burler at work. The pieces are then taken back to the finishing department and completely finished. In the finishing department, some pieces can go through as many as 40 processes. We are now in the warehouse where the finished pieces are weighed, measured and examined. Each inch of cloth is carefully scrutinized. Nothing is allowed to leave the works which is not up to Crombie's high standard.
After examination, pieces are doubled and rolled and packed ready for dispatch. A consignment of goods is being made ready for the United States of America and the Canadian markets. Each bale or drum of cloth is checked onto a lorry. loaded lorry leaving the works. The cloths which you see are typical of the exclusive designs, colouring and quality which Crombies send all over the world. <laughs> 